Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. How's your day doing so far? Fine, thank you, teacher. Nice to hear that. So today is Tuesday. We're just, I think, six classes and then we finish. How are you doing with the platform? I think you finished, right, Naomi? You finished the platform? Yes, 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 teacher. I see. What about you, Andrea? Have you finished? Eh, me faltan unas poquitas, teacher. Eso estaba haciendo hace ratito. Okay. Jose Arnaldo, how are you doing with the platform? Hello, teacher. Um, no me acuerdo por dónde voy. Okay, so I just see three people here in the section. So we can start by checking some of the exercise we're just missing. We have completed together the first three sections and also the midterm exam. So I think that we can review the exercise from the section number four before we continue. And also we can uh, continue also with the exam. Just let me get into the platform. So I'm here now. We did all this, so I'm going to get into the section number four. Someone was having some issues here, and I want to check these exercises. All right, so first exercise in section number four, where we left, is numbers steps in the correct order. Type only the numbers. Hmm. So number one, it says analyze the job, decide skill and knowledge gaps, implementing training, uh, identify personal current skill and knowledge, evaluate performance after training, identify training solutions. Hmm. How do you have this one done? What is the number one if it says we need to number them? Analyze the job. That would be one? Yes. Uh, so I think I have to put the number here, right? What should be the number two? Identify personal current skills and knowledge. Okay. Number three? Is decide skills and knowledge gasp. Okay. Or is identify training solutions. Mm -hmm. Five, implement training. Okay. And six, evaluate performance after training. And then we send. Okay, so you did an excellent job. Thank you so much for providing us with the answers. So for the ones who haven't done this exercise, you can take notes. The first exercise in section number four should be uh, number one, three, five, two, six, and finally number four. Now let us check the, the next exercise here. So it says that we have to use will and the verb in parentheses. Okay. It seems like easy, right? Just will and the verb here. So should be will have, I guess. It's correct. Number two. Will be. Okay, will be. Will do. Will do, okay. Will not be. Hmm? Will not be will not be okay and will work will work that's too easy that's a piece of cake <laughs> i wish english would be like this 
And the third exercise in section number four, it says that we need to complete using will or the present progressive. What do you remember about the present progressive? Verb, what do we use? Mm, mm -hmm. Mas ing. Okay, so we use the verb plus ing and which tense is it used for? Or in what cases can we use the present continuous or present progressive? Present progressive. Uh -huh. When the action continue. Uh -huh. yes. For a progressive or an action in progress at the moment of a speaking. Okay, that would be one of the uses. Another use for the present progressive. When we speak at the future. Aha, uh -huh, in a near future. Okay, so when we use it for a near future, we need to use a time expression, right? So let's see how it goes. Number one, I can't come with you on Sunday. I. Teacher, esa yo le puse de las dos maneras y las dos me salieron malas. Oh, really? Yes. So let's try we have. Hmm. You look tired. This will help. Will help. Okay. Number three. Esa también me salió mal. Mm -hmm. The kitchen manager is flying. Eso así me lo, me lo aceptó a mí. Ajá. Esta pues parece que tendría que ser progresivo, ¿verdad? Porque está como sí. para future. Is flying. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. And number four. Thank you. So, anybody has the answer for number four? No, teacher, me salió mala de todas las maneras posibles. <laughs> en esta. Welcome. 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 And the last one, ah, number uh -huh. five. También me salió esa dos de abajo malas a mí. Okay. Ya te entendí. Pero no le hubiera Teacher, uh -huh. is, isn't working y me salió bien. Así como había puesto. Como lo working? puse aquí. Sí. sí, a mí igual así me salió bien. Ajá, pero ya lo puse así y me la toma mala. Como mala. A, a mí también me, me envié, salió como mala. Se la envié al, al, al chat, teacher. A ver si. Mm. Okay. Al sí, eh, okay, al 39 para que me saliera el apóstrofe que debe de ser. <ríe> okay. Okay, y 39. ya lo mandaron al chat, ¿verdad? Isn't working. Ahí lo pueden copiar. Thank you so much, Rafael. Isn't working. La primera la tiene incorrecta, teacher. Is I'm having. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm um, having. Okay, sí, la agarro así como I can't come with you on Sunday. I am having a try. Okay, yes, it should be progressive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the answers. Para los que estaban teniendo problemas con la 1 y la 5, ahí están las respuestas. Gracias a todos por su ayuda. Y ya saben, la otra está en el chat, la del para que les dé el apóstrofe correcto. <ríe> ok, vamos a ver. Next exercise. Next. How important are following evaluation points? Read them, select. How would you rate overall quality of important. the system? Important. Important. How effective word handle? No important. No import. important. 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 How convenient was the location? Important. Important. Is important? Important. Yes. Okay. How Or well? Important. 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 Right? Important. 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 Todo important. Okay. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say the location is not important, but <laughs> the platform says important. So, okay, important. So, let's see this one. Match the description with the training solution. Okay, what do you got here? Shadowing. Shadowing, okay. Number two of the, the self-training self -training course. 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 Number three. Mentoring. Mentoring. And four. In-house In training. training. Okay, they are showing correct. Very good job. Thank you so much. And what do we have next? Would be uh, this the final exam, right? Yes. Okay. Expense. Expense. Hmm. I think yeah. that um, most of you have uh, been doing um, all the exercises, so we can discuss the exam in maybe later. But as for today, we have completed all the sections, exercises, and also the midterm. So we can continue with the program. And in case that you go there and you find any difficult exercise in the exam, we can discuss it as well. So right now I'm going to stop sharing and we're going to check attendance before we continue with uh, yesterday's topic because um, I found some interesting material that's going to help us to continue practicing that one. So let me check attendance first. Andrea Laurena. Present teacher. Thank you, Andrea. Belén Batres. Carlos Mario. Carlos Mario, eh, Carmen René, Delmi Guadalupe, present, thank you Delmi, Francisco Nehemías, present, thank you, Helen Dionelli, present teacher, thank you Helen, Iris Joana, Iris Joana, Jose Arnoldo. Present. Thank you. Juan Ricardo Alvarenga. Juan Ricardo Menedemo. Present teacher. Okay, Kenia Cecilia. Kenia. 
Marisela del Carmen. Marisela del Carmen. Okay. Moisés Alberto. Moisés Alberto. Ah. Thank you, Moisés. Noemí Albertina. Present teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio. Present. Thank you, Rafael. Reina Margarita. Reina Margarita. Rubén de Jesús. Present teacher. Thank you. Judy Araceli. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Jose Rudy. Jose Rudy. Ana Mercedes. Present teacher. Thank you, Ana. María Angélica. María Angélica. Imelda Elizabeth. Present. Thank you. Eh, Susana. Okay, let's continue with the program. Let me share the screen with you. I already sent you the presentation and I modified it. La modifiqué, le quité algo del material de ayer porque encontré algo mejor donde el tema pues que ayer empezamos, más o menos teníamos la idea y empezábamos a trabajar bien con eso. Esto nos va a ayudar a reforzar mejor el tema. So, yes, remember that we were talking about how to use the perfect with models to express regret or remorse and we discussed that we can use should have plus past participle to talk about regrets and we have a couple of examples here should have sent i should have sent the report sooner or i shouldn't have asked her to carry those boxes um if we use it with the conditional like could and would have and are often with the conditional if, then the verb had in past, the auxiliary verb, and then the past participle of the main verb. And we also discussed that in this structure, this, this one specifically, we use two clauses or sentences to make it easier. We also discussed about punctuation. So today we're going to be reinforcing that topic. And for that, I have this um, uh, vocabulary to start. So in this one, we're going to listen to some regrets. So let me share my screen with the material so you can listen to the audio. Okay, let's see. I'm sharing sound. Okay, let's listen. Page 75, exercise 7, perspectives. I should have... Part A. Listen to Maya Misery talk about her regrets. Do you have any similar regrets? I should have studied something more practical while I was in college. I shouldn't have waited so long to choose a major. If I'd listened to my mother, I would have learned to play a musical instrument. If I hadn't wasted so much money last year, I would have moved into my own apartment by now. If I'd been more ambitious in college, I could have learned to speak another language. If I hadn't been so irresponsible, I could have gotten better grades. Okay, so vocabulary here, or questions about this? Teacher, una consulta. Yo, o sea, yo veo que dice, I should have, uh -huh. pero en el audio no escucho que diga el have. ¿Por qué creen que sea? No. Porque es auxiliar. Mm. Mm. 
She is native. I uh, yes, yes. They are native speakers. And what do they do with that kind of verb? They contract. Get sujeto. Right? Mm -hmm. Get sujeto. No, no están contractando sujetos. Están contractando el auxiliar. Okay. Auxiliar. Ajá. Sí, el, el shut up. Dicen shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Estoy yo me... Teacher, la parte de I shouldn't have, ¿cómo se pronunciaría así? It's should enough. Should enough. Uh -huh. Ya vamos a, a, les he incluido también la pronunciación. Hay un ejercicio más adelante para que vean. So, uh, in this, I should have, es como que lo contractan, aunque ustedes escrito no lo están viendo que esté contractado. Pero en inglés, cuando ellos están hablando, sí lo contractan. No dicen, I should have studied something. Es rarísimo que lo digan completo. Pero en speaking, ellos usan mucho las contracciones y, y ellos hacen link. Um, so they link should y have, lo unen. Should have. I should have studied something. Sí lo mencionan, pero es bastante rapidito. If I had listened, it didn't The pronunciation starting to start. En este caso, if I listen, I listen. Entonces, por eso es que no lo, no, tal vez no lo logramos agarrar porque tal vez estamos leyendo I should have, en lo que el audio va, ya nos dejó atrás. Lo vamos a poner otra vez y van a escuchar que sí lo pronuncian, pero en este caso hacen el link, should have, lo, lo usan, should have. Y acá sí pronuncian ya como está aquí, I, if I Listen, if I'd listen, I'd been, if I hadn't, so, vamos a escucharlo otra vez y van a, si, sí, ahí está, solo que o hacen link o hacen la contracción en speaking. Voy a compartir el audio otra vez. Page 75, exercise 7, perspectives. I should have. Part A. Listen to Maya Misery talk about her regrets. Do you have any similar regrets? I should have studied something more practical while I was in college. I shouldn't have waited so long to choose a major. If I'd listened to my mother, I would have learned to play a musical instrument. If I hadn't wasted so much money last year, I would have moved into my own apartment by now. If I'd been more ambitious in college, I could have learned to speak another language. If I hadn't been so irresponsible, I could have gotten better grades. Did you notice? Si lo notaron? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Excellent. Yes, teacher. Good. Um, Nice. <laughs> so, uh, yes, we're going to be practicing this. Let me share the presentation with you so we can uh, have a quick view of this. So first we have this exercise, which we already heard the audio. And then we have a couple of more exercises. And here is the pronunciation. Aquí está la reducción que ellos hacen. I should have. Should have. Ven, aquí está como tachadito esto. Y vamos a llegar por ahí en unos momentitos. Vamos a ver la pronunciación también de eso. So now, let's see. Uh, that's a funny name, right? Maya Misery. <laughs> Talking to her psychologist, probably. Um, expressing all the things that she regrets. So uh, what do you suggest? to help Maya feel better. She regrets all these things. What do you suggest? Suggestion for her? Purchase. Um, well, I think maybe she could think about the positive thing that, that she do that she did uh, this time? Yes, start thinking about 
positive thing that she has done so far, that would be a good thing, right? Not only regret about the past and do something about the present, right? Okay, yeah. that's good. She don't have to center in the past, maybe. Yeah, she doesn't she have, have to, to think in the future. To think about future, okay? She should have start uh, thinking about the future, okay? Mm -hmm. Any other advice or suggestions so she can feel better? Ambitious, así es, ambitious. Ambitious. Amb ambitious, ambitious. Okay, uh, yesterday we also discussed about the structure uh, that we're going to use to express regret and describing hypothetical situation. That is hypothetical because uh, we cannot change the past, the right? Question. Uh, so that's so, what it is called hypothetical, right? Because we can no longer change it. So uh, we're going to listen to the audio so you can um, listen the pronunciation and then we're going to review the structure. And also we have a couple of exercises to practice this. Page 75, Exercise 8, Grammar Focus. Expressing regret and describing hypothetical situations. Use should have plus the past participle to express regret. I should have studied something more practical when I was in college. I shouldn't have waited so long to choose a major. Use would have plus the past participle to express probable outcomes in hypothetical situations. Use could have plus the past participle to express possible outcomes. If I'd listened to my mother, I would have learned to play a musical instrument. If I hadn't been so irresponsible, I could have gotten better grades. Okay, so what do you understand from this? ¿Qué entienden de este grammar chart? Ya más o menos vimos esto ayer. Any idea? Ayer más o menos lo vimos. Ajá. Hoy que alguien... Um, I don't too, that we have to use uh, the auxiliar should to express regrets. Mm -hmm. uh, the auxiliar would and could to talk about possibilities, but uh, in the past. What uh -huh. happened? What what will happen if we? Um, <laughs> si hubiéramos hecho otra cosa. <laughs> if we have done something different. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's why it is called hypothetical because we cannot change that, but we can think in a possible uh, result or solution. That is the meaning of outcome. Es como una salida, como hubieran salido las cosas, cuál podría ser una solución. But just thinking like hypothetical because we can no longer change it. But yes, excellent, excellent job. So we use should have to express regret. And then would have or could have to express a possible outcome. Very good. And uh, yes, like, um, like we said yesterday, we have two sentences. Tenemos dos oraciones. Una en la que expresamos el regret. If I listen to my mother, 
that's a comma here, I will have learned to play a musical instrument. Y podemos colocar la segunda oración al principio. Y esta de segundo, la, la if, la que empieza con if, solamente que ya no utilizaríamos la coma. Eso es por puntuación, ¿verdad? Podemos decir, I would have learned to play a musical instrument if I listened to my mother. Okay. But yes, that is in regards of puntuations. La, let's see the exercise here. Now that we discuss here. And we listen to the recording. So we have two exercises here. The first one, it says for each statement, write a sentence expressing regret. Then talk with a partner about which statements are true for you. For example, we have number one already done. The sentence says, I was very rebellious when I was younger. Now, to express regret about this situation, we know that we have to use should have plus past participle. So we translate these sentences into the structure for regret. And it comes like, here we have, I should have been less rebellious when I was younger. Is the exercise clear? Yes, it's clear. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, yes, so teacher. you're going to do the same with the other four sentences. So we can do it here in the notebooks and then we're going to share.
finished. Yes, teacher. Okay, uh, volunteer for number two. Noemi, thank you so much. What do you have? Number two is, I should have paid attention to what I ate as a kid. Excellent, that is correct. Thank you so much, Noemi. Volunteer for number three. Belen or oh, Andrea. Andrea, I have your hand here. Okay, Andrea. I should have made many friends in high school. Excellent. Thank you so much. That is correct. Uh, number four, volunteer, Delmi. I should have been less argumentative as a teenager. Excellent. It's correct. Uh, and the last one, uh, volunteer for the last one, number five. I was too near when I started looking for my first job. Maria Angelica, thank you. Uh, I don't know. I should have been more astute when I start looking for my first job. Yes, that could be a very, very good option. Or I shouldn't have been too naive when I started looking for my first job. But yes, good, good option. Now let's match the clauses. Ahorita estuvimos haciendo solo las de regrets. And then we have this matching exercise. Okay, so we have to put together the match the clauses in column A with the appropriate information in column B. You don't have time to do that. You can do it in your notebooks as well. Place this up here. Okay. Teacher, what is the meaning of gained? Of then ganado. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Ganado, pero no, no, no aquel ganado. Eh, obtenido o acumulado. No de animales, no de animales. No, 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 no de ese ganado. Okay, okay. <laughs> que solo le ganado, ah, pero de obtener, uh, haber ganado este peso, dice ahí, no debía o no hubiera ganado todo este peso. Hello teacher, good evening. Good evening. Uh, when I came to the class, I, I don't know what 
<laughs> they working and I do the second part. You did the second part. Okay. Yes. Good. Okay, so um has everybody finished the second part or you need more time? I finished it. Okay. So do we have volunteers to read the first matching uh sentences? Okay, let's see, I have two, let's see. Carlos, you can do number one and Belen, you can do number two. Andrea, number three. Okay. You can start, Carlos. Okay. If I listen to my parent, I will have made more pragmatic decisions. Okay. That's correct. Thank you so much. Belen? Yes, teacher. If I'd been more active, I wouldn't have gained, gained it all this weight. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. That is correct. Andrea? If I'd been more ambitious, I, I could have gotten a promotion. Uh -huh. Excellent. Uh, volunteer for number four? Maria Angelica, thank you. If I studied harder in school, I could have learned a lot more. Excellent. And Noemi, number five. Thank you. If I had saved my money, I wouldn't have had to borrow so much. Excellent, that is correct. So you have all these examples and you're gonna use them or they're gonna be useful for the upcoming exercises. Right now we have, this is a short exercise about the uh, pronunciation, the reduction of have and been as we were discussing at the beginning of the class. Um, let's listen. To the audio, let me oh, share it with this material. Okay, here it is. Uh, we have the reduction of having been. So let's listen first and then we, we can um, take a couple of minutes to practice. So let me make it bigger. I think I can. Okay, this is in part A. So let's listen and notice how these uh, the words that are crossed out. So you you will not listen to them. So because they are reduced, and that is what native speakers do all the time. Page 76, Exercise 10, Pronunciation. Reduction of have and been. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice how have and been are reduced in these sentences. I should have been less selfish when I was younger. If I'd been more ambitious, I could have gotten a promotion. Page 76, Exercise 10, Pronunciation. Reduction of have and been. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice how have and been are reduced in these sentences. I should have been less selfish when I was younger. If I'd been more ambitious, I could have gotten a promotion. I'm going to play the recording once again, and I'm going to pause after each sentence, giving you the chance to repeat as you hear. Remember that one important thing is no vamos a habilitar los micrófonos para no escuchar uh, que unos vamos más adelante que otros. Y otra cosa muy importante que nos va a ayudar para aprender a pronunciar es escuchar primero, no tratar de repetir a la par de la grabación, sino que primero... Eh, solo escuchar y luego es repetir, ¿ok? 
giving chance, eh, tratar de memorizar cómo escuchamos que se pronunció y luego tratar de imitarlo lo mejor que podamos. Okay. So, vamos a hacer el ejercicio tres veces y voy a pausar después de cada oración para que ustedes puedan repetir. So, let's do it. Page 76, Exercise 10, Pronunciation. Reduction of have and been. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice how have and been are reduced in these sentences. I should have been less selfish when I was younger. If I'd been more ambitious, I could have gotten a promotion. Page 76, Exercise 10, Pronunciation. Reduction of have and been. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice how have and been are reduced in these sentences. I should have been less selfish when I was younger. If I'd been more ambitious, I could have gotten a promotion. Page 76, Exercise 10, Pronunciation. Reduction of have and been. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice how have and been are reduced in these sentences. I should have been less selfish when I was younger. If I'd been more ambitious, I could have gotten a promotion. And that was our pronunciation practice. So we can move on and see. This is another listening exercise that I have for you. We're going to listen to people describe their regrets and what does each person regret? We have three different people here, Alex, Gijun, and Jacob. You can write the names in your notebook as they appear here. And the what does he or she regret? and why. So first it's the question is what, and then it's the why. So we have to get this information from listening, but I'm going to give you a chance for you to write in your notebooks the names as they appear here, and also the two questions. Okay, I'll give you time. Sorry, teacher, but I can't reproduce the song in, in my cell phone. 
Uh, no, I'm giving you a chance to write the, the information on the chart and I'm going to play the recording in a while. Oh, uh, okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Is everybody ready? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, so let's listen and try to get this information. Okay, at the bottom here, let me check out you again. Okay, here we go. Page 76, exercise 11, listening. Regrets. Part A. Listen to people describe their regrets. What does each person regret? 1. Alex. I should never have stopped exercising. It's the dumbest thing I've ever done. I've been trying to lose weight for the last year and a half, and it's really difficult. I guess I was just like everyone else at my age. I thought I would be thin forever, and I ate junk food all the time. It was okay then, because I was playing tennis, hockey, and soccer. Then after college, I got busy and quit playing sports. But now I'm determined to join a gym, because I know I can't get healthy by just dieting. Besides, I love potato chips. 2. Yun. If I'd had a choice, I would have learned to play the guitar when I was a kid. My parents made me study the piano, and I only studied classical music. I loved the piano, but it's not very practical. I mean, you can't take a piano with you to a party. But I love it at a party when someone brings a guitar, and they can play songs, and everyone sings along. I wish I could do that. 3. Jacob I regret something I didn't do. I regret not going to Europe with my friends when I had the chance. It was the summer after we all graduated from college. I started to look for a job right away, but my friends went backpacking in Europe for a few weeks. I should have gone because I didn't get a job right away anyway, and my friends had an unforgettable time together. I regret it because they all had this amazing experience without me. And, looking back, I could have, and should have, gone. Page 76, Exercise 11, Listening. Regrets. Part A. Listen to people describe their regrets. What does each person regret? 1. Alex. I should never have stopped exercising. It's the dumbest thing I've ever done. I've been trying to lose weight for the last year and a half, and it's really difficult. I guess I was just like everyone else at my age. I thought I would be thin forever, and I ate junk food all the time. It was okay then, because I was playing tennis, hockey, and soccer. Then after college, I got busy and quit playing sports. But now I'm determined to join a gym, because I know I can't get healthy by just dieting. Besides, I love potato chips. 2. Yun. If I'd had a choice, I would have learned to play the guitar when I was a kid. My parents made me study the piano, and I only studied classical music. I love the piano, but it's not very practical. I mean, you can't take a piano with you to a party but I love it at a party when someone brings a guitar and they can play songs and everyone sings along. I wish I could do that. 3. Jacob I regret something I didn't do. I regret not going to Europe with my friends when I had the chance. It was the summer after we all graduated from college. I started to look for a job right away, but my friends went backpacking in Europe for a few weeks. I should have gone because I didn't get a job right away anyway, and my friends had an unforgettable time together. I regret it because they all had this amazing experience without me, and looking back, I could have, 
and should have gone. Did you gather all the information? Yes, teacher. Okay, so let us check. Mm -hmm. Teacher, I have a question. We, we're going to describe the, the regrets. It means I don't have to put it in a sentence. I just will describe what exactly regret Alex and why regret it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So do you have the number one? Yes, teacher. Okay. Can you share the answers with us or the information? Yeah. Uh, Alex, uh, he regret uh, that he gained weight. Mm -hmm. And why regret, regret it? It's because he loved junk food and he loved potato chips. And she thought that he thought, sorry, that uh, it will be tiny forever. <laughs> but then he started to work and and have an time for the gym. So today it's making time. Yes, that is correct. So as you can see here. Uh, he regrets that he ever stopped exercising and why? Well, you gave us all the information. Excellent job, Belen. Thank you so much. And okay. volunteer for number two. Maria Angelica, thank you. Did you regret about not learning to play guitar because they She's parents and make her take a piano lesson. Oh, yes. Excellent. Yes, that is the correct information. Thank you so much. Uh, volunteer for the number three. What about Jacob? Imelda? Um, he uh, had regret. Uh, because he didn't go to Europe with his friends when he was a teenager. Yes. So let me don't let this. <laughs> and that's yeah, correct. I have that's a question good. with with uh, with um, Jacob because I don't I don't know if I understood. Uh, correctly, but he said that the reason why he regrets it's because they didn't got a job. Hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah. We can check again and listen. So I think I think the teacher is he prefer he prefer looking a job mm -hmm. and not go yeah, to yeah. the Europe. Uh huh. And um, yes, that is correct. Oh, thank you so always. much. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing that. So let us continue with what I have here for you. Okay, now that we completed the listening, it is time to write a letter of apology. Think about something you regret doing that you want to apologize for. Consider the question below and then write a letter of apology. What did you do? What were the consequences? Is there any way you can undo those consequences? And we have an example here. Let's look at the picture. That looks like his title being bacon, right? <laughs> uh, volunteer to read the letter. Carlos, thank you. Dear Jonathan, I'm really sorry I forgot to tell you that, that my party was canceled. You worked so hard making all those cookies. 
I should, I should call or send you a text before you started baking then, but I got really busy at work and, and, and didn't get around to, to it. If I had been more conscientious. Mm -hmm. And it might continue, right? So uh, we're gonna use the structures that we've been uh, practicing how to express regrets and also outcomes. Si se fijan, está utilizando ambas estructuras, expresando lo que lamenta y la posible, eh, el posible desenlace o, o, o el outcome, right? So, here is uh, expressing the regret. I should have called or sent you a text before you start. And if I be more, more conscientious and this may continue. So, um, I think that we may share ideas in groups. So you were going to think in a situation or in something that you regret the consequences. And um, if there is a way that you can undo these consequences, you can uh, express them in a letter of apology. And you can write it in a simple uh, Word document or the way that you prefer. I know that you're very creative. So we're going to make groups and you think in something that you did and you regret, you choose the situation, you discuss the situation with the group, share it, and then you can write a letter of apologies, right? So let me create the groups. I dare uh, no keep losing teach.
Ya, Sandra. Teacher, este no nos queda claro lo que vamos a hacer. Discutir una situación de la que ustedes hayan hecho que tuvieron consecuencias y que desearían escribir una letra, una carta de disculpa, así como el ejemplo que tienen ahí. Mm. Solo una. Sí, solo una. Ustedes deciden cuál. O se la imaginan o comparten. Ah, sí, yo una vez hice esto y, y, y tal y tal cosa y no resultó así, pero yo no le avisé a tiempo, entonces etcétera, ¿verdad? Yo pude haber hecho tal cosa para que esto no sucediera, etcétera. Ah, vaya. Gracias. Y luego, así como tienen el ejemplo ahí, ¿verdad? ¿Cómo harían la carta de disculpa por esa situación para esa persona? Vaya. Uh -huh. uh -huh. okay. Bueno, yo no me recuerdo de ninguna. No sé si usted. Estoy pensando en algo del trabajo, pero. Sí, yo también, pero. Así como que me den ganas de disculparme, ¿no? No sé, pueden dejar así lo del trabajo, por ejemplo, ¿qué pasó? Usted tuvo una mascotita indominable, la regaló y resulta que a la persona que se la regaló eh, se le enfermó y se murió, usted pudo haber mejor cuidado de la mascotita o pudo haber averiguado más de la persona a la que se la iba a dar antes de hacerlo, etcétera. Ok. Uh -huh. Veamos. Bueno, no se me ocurre nada. <risa> Yo también. No sé, alguna pensando. vez dieron algún regalo inapropiado o que a la persona no le gustó. O enviamos eh, un mensaje eh, de texto. O enviaron un mensaje o <risa> algún su emoji que se les fue. <risa> sí. Uh -huh. eh, que Como hubieran escrito un texto disculpándose o, o qué es lo que hubieran hecho diferente. Cualquier cosa. Vaya. Ya me acordé, les voy a contar algo. Mere, si usted estuvo conmigo desde el primer módulo. ¿Sí? ¿Se acuerda cuando estábamos con el teacher, con el jo teacher Josué? ¿Se ¿Ah? acuerda la pues primera sí, vez que compartimos pantalla de las canciones? Sí, pero al final este, sí me recuerdo que todos se alebrestaron, pero no me percaté en realidad qué es lo que compartió. <risa> es que fue sin querer, vaya, como era la primera vez compartiendo pantalla, este, yo tenía vaya. abierto el, el WhatsApp, entonces no había dejado de compartir y tenía conversaciones, ahí va. Uh -huh. Y me, había, me habían mandado... Como le explicó algo así, como comprometedor. Sones. Ajá, algo personal. Entonces todos lo vieron y por eso todo se queda. Ah, yo, yo me acuerdo que ah, ah, sí. vieron los chats de WhatsApp y Cabal era el primer mensaje. Decía, decía, pero yo quiero ver más, decía. Ay, no, Andrea. Y estábamos en clase. ¿Y cómo se disculpó? No, se la no dijo nada. Como no, dejé de compartir rapidito, más que no podía. Es que sí, al inicio nos costó eso. Es con, todos con el temor, va, de no de compartir algo que no es. Sí, creo que fue el primer módulo, creo. Pues sí segundo. les estoy compartiendo la presentación, ¿verdad? ¿Sí? Sí. Ay, no, Coco. Bueno, escribamos eso entonces. 
¿Cuáles fueron las consecuencias? Todos se burlaron. No, no, verdad. No, carga. Permítame que no tengo carga, espero que no se apague. Podría ser I, I was ¿Cómo se dice? Como apenado en, en barra ser algo así mm, Yes, it's in burst In, in burst Y lo vamos a tener que presentar para ir armando un... Tal vez Mercy lo puede escribir ahí. En... La presenta... Ay, no, casi no puedo hablar. Pero como es una carta, una como cartita chiquita. Ajá, como se si hubiera disculpado Ajá. en ese caso con, con el teacher y los compañeros. <risa> <risa> Vaya, dear partner, partners. Ajá, dear classmates and teacher. <risa> Quizás se le apagó la computadora a Mercy. No, creo que sí, porque ya no está. Ya no está ni ella. Quiero ver sí, si puedo yes. compartir. Uh -huh. Aquí creo que está escribiendo. Y yes, se quedó sin carga, así que pueden continuar y, y luego que ella se una. Ok. Uh -huh. Perdón, lo siento, se me quedó sin carga la compu. <ríe> ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo van? No queremos redactar la, la disculpa que, que debería de dar, debió haber dado a Andrea. Creo que ahí puso algo. The teacher en, ¿cómo sería? Para los compañeros. Polish, no, no es así. Sí, podría ser. Jugo no hay, mamá. Classmate, Así, creo que es. Classmate. Uh -huh. Sorry for the for the presented jugo. Ahí encima de la cocina está el vaso con jugo, mira. Perdón, no sería, perdón por haber presentado. Sorry for. O por haber compartido. Uh -huh. Compartido por error. <risa> Como, sorry for sharing. Creo que sería como ahí. El... Ay, bebé, espérate. My, my mistake. My. 
My con kid. B, perdón, ma, no, by mister, por error. Ah. <coughs> By mistake. Uh -huh. Con B. B. De por. By. Así. En vez de cherry, en vez de la M, ahí sería P. Así. ¿Así? Uh -huh. By mistake. My. WhatsApp screen, así sería. Uh -huh. O conversación, porque al final le dieron la conversación. <risa> conversación de WhatsApp. Sí, yo solo me quedé y qué pasa, de <risa> Entonces, ¿cómo lo pongo? Por, sí, así está bien. My WhatsApp screen, entonces. Oh. My WhatsApp Ajá. conversations. Ajá. My WhatsApp conversation. Que no era, ina que era inapropiada, Leo. <risa> bueno. <risa> Ay, no. <risa> pero ahí quizás sería como, pero es mi primera vez compartiendo pantalla a través de Zoom. ¿Cómo sería? De inapropiado, seguía. Entonces. No le iba a poner así. No, 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 sé, no, 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 Ajá, uh -huh. without checking first, como decir, no debía haber compartido a uh, pantalla sin chequear antes. Um, that um, improper <coughs> content could have been shared. Mm. Mm. Pero podríamos dejarlo hasta ahí y después le agregamos I, I shouldn't uh -huh. I shouldn't have shared the screen without checking the tabs that I have open in my computer I shouldn't have shared the screen without checking first without H O Without mm -mm. Out. Uh -huh. Out. y va unido, ah, pero no sé, tiene un espacio bien cortito para escribir With, without checking o without closing tabs o without closing the WhatsApp tab first. The WhatsApp tab. First, uh -huh. first. <clears throat> um, I poder ponerle, I could have, pude haber evitado provocar el desorden en clase. <laughs> I could have avoided provoking or disrupting the class, etc. Mm -hmm. Oh, la, la, the bad lamb. 
Es como la algarabía. Ahí se los escribí. Se formó un relajo, una algarabía. Dice. I could have avoided the bedlam and distraction for class. Avoid the? La escribí en el chat de la meeting. No sé si no les cae. Revíseme. The bedlam. Ajá. Uh -huh. The bedlam on the class. In the class or oh, on. In the meeting section, for poner or in the section. Vaya, hasta ahí lo dejamos, le ponemos más. Ah, no sé, puede ponerle a. Uh... Uh, I promise I will be more careful from now on. I will be careful from now on. De ahora en adelante. <laughs> for careful from, for, from. from now. Ahora, now, on. Yes. O N. Uh -huh. Y ahí le pueden agregar algún su dibujito o algo. O oh, chequear spelling, etc. Ya casi terminado. Uh -huh. No sé cómo hacer esta cosa más grande. Quizás el diseño de la diapositiva tenía que ser para ponerle texto, porque creo que si solo le dio agregar, le salió Ajá. automáticamente en blanco. Bueno, entonces así se la voy a compartir. It's ok. <risa> Vaya compañeros, ¿y quién lo va a leer? Y sí, ya es hora. ¿Y el muñequito? Es que no sé qué, ni sé cómo hacer esto más grande, no le digo. La letra, no, si le da ahí cambiar el texto ahí, en el tamaño de la letra. Ok, let's check what you have. Uh, room number one is ready. Francisco, María Angélica, Noemi, Rafael, and Rubén. Yes, teacher. Okay. Which are the screen? The letter is uh, dear, dear Francisco. We're very sorry. We forgot to tell you that our party was canceled. And Francisco Nemias. Si gusta puede continuar. Uh, we know you lose you day off. We shall be color or send a text before to reschedule your afternoon shift. Okay, uh, Ruben de Jesus, si está. But we got very busy at work and didn't find your telephone number if we 
we make sure to write your telephone number in our contact. Excellent. You did it excellent. Very good, nice, and very creative. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you so much. Excellent job, excellent. Um, now let's listen to room number two. Helen, Imelda, Juan Ricardo, Marisela, and Judy. Um, so let us three teacher, Delmi and Juan Ricardo. Eh, no, no, Carlos, no, perdón. Nosotros éramos el dos. Uh -huh. Yes, in number two, Hello. it was... ¿Verdad que sí? El, el, en el 2 o sea, teníamos a Gene, Imelda, Juan ah, pues Ricardo, sí. Marisela y sí. Judy. Ah, sí. Okay. Eh, tal vez uno de los compañeros puede compartir que... O lo leemos nada más. Es que lo, lo escribimos en la pizarra de Zoom y no, ahí no se guarda. <ríe> no. Hola, teacher. Teacher. Lo yeah. puede... Lo puede... Ah. Ahí lo está compartiendo. Ahí está. Ok, empiezo yo. Good morning to all the employees. I just now planned a three speech our days. I take a risk because how eh, I Que continúe alguien más para acá. Bye. Ahí no, me quedan a water. This freeze twice. Siga. Ok, ¿dónde se quedó Menedem? Guays. Después de la coma puede seguir. Ok. <laughs> But because of the weather, the trip was canceled. We so we... To do last month. So we really sorry. We the, uh, we really sorry the situation. We will notify you about the new date. Finish. Sounds good. Thank you so much. You did a good job and you uh, used the proper structure. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, let's listen room number three. Belen, Carlos Mario, Delmi and Kenya. Okay. The first question, what did you do? The customer for God called Jonathan to cancel the order. And he says, if I had been more conscientious, you shouldn't have been, have spent time and money in that cookies. Okay, um, and we try to ask one other question, teacher. So, um, tell me has the answer for the first one. What uh, what happened? What what did he do? And uh, Carlos continue with the with the answer of the apologies. The second question is. He has spent money for being wasted his time. And the third question is how can try to solve the consequence? Undo the consequence, sorry. And uh -huh. the answer is I could give you a compensation for solve part of the problem. Excellent, excellent. That seems fair. Uh, you could have given him um, compensation, right? part of the money that he spent or buy the cookies as well. Excellent, very good job. Thank you so much for sharing. Now in room number four, Andrea, Iris, Margarita and Mercedes. Pretty territory.
No sé por qué se está tardando tanto. It's maybe the internet connection. Maybe. There you go. Okay. The teacher and classmate. Sorry for sharing by mistake my WhatsApp conversation. I shouldn't have shared the screen without closing the WhatsApp tab first. I could have avoided the bedlam in the meeting section. I promise I will be careful from now on. Excellent. I think that, yes, some of us have, <laughs> have had the same situation, right? And somehow, <laughs> yes, thank you so much for uh, sharing your, uh, your work. So um, let's check attendance once again to see if we are all here. Let's check. Andrea Laurena? Present teacher. Thank you so much. Belen Batres? Present teacher. Thank you so much. Carlos Mario. Present teacher. Thank you, Carlos. Carmen Rene. Delmi Guadalupe. Present. Thank you so much. Francisco Nehemias. Present teacher. Thank you. Helen Dionelli. I'm here, teacher. Thank you so much. Iris Joana. Present teacher. Thank you, Iris. Jose Arnoldo. Jose Arnoldo. Juan Ricardo Alvarenga. Juan Ricardo Alvarenga. Juan Ricardo Menedemo. Present teacher. Thank you. Kenia Cecilia. Present teacher. Thank you, Kenya. Marisela del Carmen. Present teacher. Moises Alberto. Present teacher. Thank you, Moises. Noemi Albertina. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Rafael Antonio. Present teacher. Thank you. Reina Margarita. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Ruben de Jesus. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Judy Araceli. Present teacher. Thank you, Judy. Jose Rudy. Ana Mercedes. Present. Thank you. Maria Angelica. <laughs> Maria Angelica. Present. Okay, thank you. Imelda Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Susana. Okay, so that's done. Okay, uh, in the next one, uh, we have to, uh, this is a writing exercise. We have to rewrite the sentences as hypothetical situations, and we have to use the words given. So in number one, we have, I should have studied English sooner, and they have get a better job. So the first one is the conditional, if I, studied English sooner, and now the possible outcome. I would have gotten a better job. So we will follow this example to complete the number two, three, four, and five. You can rewrite the sentences in your notebook and I'll give you some time for you to do so.
Have you finished? A volunteer to share the answer for number two. Tell me, thank you so much. If we were to make a reservation, we could have eaten already. Uh -huh. If we had made a reservation, we could have eaten already. Thank you so much. Excellent job, Delmi. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, volunteer for number three. I sure have. Vamos a levantar la mano. Volunteer for number three. Juan Ricardo. I sure have a pounds to train. Don't have a soon. Ok, la primera parte sí está bien, pero la segunda le falta la estructura. No have a sound. Imelda. Number three. If I should have put on sunscreen, I wouldn't have gotten a sunburn. Excellent. That's correct. Thank you so much, Imelda. A volunteer for number four. Naomi, thank you so much, Naomi. You should have let me dry. Um, if if the should arrive by now. Hmm. The second part we're missing the auxiliar. Mm hmm. If you have, if you had let me drive, esa sería la primera. If you had yeah. let me drive. I, mm -hmm. And the second? I, I would have uh, arrived by now. Okay, yes. We would have yeah. arrived by now or I could have arrived by now. Excellent. Good okay. use of the auxiliary as well. Thank you so much, Naomi. Uh, number five, volunteer. Volunteer for number five. Nobody has it. Uh, can I teacher? Sure, thank you. If I should have ignored your text in class, I wouldn't have gotten in trouble. Okay, very good. If I had Ignore your text in class. I shouldn't have gotten in trouble. Okay, so nice. Very good. How do you feel now with this? ¿Cómo se sienten ahora con este tema? It's well, like yes. better than yesterday. Sienten que van avanzando un poquito más que ayer. Todavía yes, no queda un ejercicio, era una conversación. Yo felicito a todos y a todas porque se están esforzando en vez me dan ganas de, de decir no hasta aquí pero hay que seguir adelante. Yes, we need to continue. That is, uh, este tema le, le, le hemos dado una clase entera y un poquito más porque sí quiere bastante práctica, verdad? Estar como al principio estamos viendo el cartelito como copiando, ¿verdad? Para, ok, la primera parte es como la condición. Si yo hubiera, if I had done this, this, y luego la, la posibilidad del outcome. So, mañana lo vamos a ver en una conversación y vamos a pasar a continuar con el contenido del material. Pero sí quería saber cómo se sentían, si sienten que aún necesitamos práctica, 
le podemos dedicar más o algún review más adelante porque tampoco quiero estar que solo con esto y que se vayan a, a cansar como dice Juan Ricardo verdad y vayan a tirar la toalla porque esto no estos son temas que quizás es primera vez que los ven verdad porque a medida se va avanzando la cosa se va poniendo un poco más intensa verdad pero solo es práctica práctica y que resuelvan las dudas. Eso es muy importante jamás quedarse con las dudas, ¿verdad? Siempre preguntar. Es mejor dudar un ratito que vivir con la duda, ¿verdad? So, um, Yo creo que con la práctica tal vez ya vayamos entendiendo más. Y este, eso tenemos que hacer pues para que te comprendamos también. <risa> Sí, es, es cuestión de práctica y es un tema bien del día a día, ¿verdad? Con cosas que decimos, si hubiera hecho así, si no hubiera y el hubiera no existe, pero como estamos acostumbrados a estar lamentando cosas, ¿verdad? So, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'll let you go to sleep and see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Good night. 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 Good night.